Básicamente igual sí, pero mentalmente me cuesta mucho, ¿no? Entonces, ha sido una decisión de equipo la que me ha mandado a correr la vuelta y la he tenido que aceptar. These harsh declarations by Miguel in the rain marked the beginning of the end of his career. A retirement that is more than 25 years old today. What happened between August and September 1996 was the definitive push for the great Spanish champion to leave cycling. Possibly the first major episode of mistreatment in what is now Movistar. Do you want to know what happened? Well, without further ado, let the show begin. After failing in his goal of winning his sixth Tour de France, Miguel Indurain regained his smile days later with the Spanish national cycling team. At the Atlanta 96 Olympic Games, Big Mig won the gold medal after a convincing victory in the time trial. It was not a yellow jersey, but an ideal success in which he could prepare for the next big goal the Spanish giant had in mind the World Cycling Championships in Lugano. However, before the Vuelta a Burgos, in which he finished second behind the Swiss Tony Rominger, team managers Jose Miguel Echavari and Eusebio Anzui forced in the rain to participate in the Vuelta a España under pressure from sponsors, as the five-time tour champion told us at the beginning of the video. However, his directors kept lying in front of the cameras claiming that they had invited in the rain to participate. Porque cuando nosotros tomamos la decisión, o yo personalmente tomamos la decisión de, de, de invitarle a, a disputar la Vuelta a España, no pensábamos nunca ni quisiéramos pensar que, que podría tener este desenlace final. The organizers of the Vuelta a España had devised an ideal route for in the rain, with hardly any mountains and a great time trial where the rider from Navarre could win the race. But Miguel did not have it all his own way, he knew that the Anse team of Lauren Jalaber and Alex Zula had the race marked on their calendar and that they were going to try to humiliate him on the road. Despite an NBA style presentation event, we observed in the rain very uneasy and without enough motivation to be able to fight for the leader's jersey in the Vuelta. Bueno, si lo dejo, pues hay buenos rivales y que si no soy yo, pues serán otros los que les hagan disfrutar del ciclismo. The competition started, as Indurain expected, with loss of energy from the Onsei team riders. The pupils of Manolo Saez went at full speed through the plains of Albacete and took advantage of the wind to perform a real ambush in which the Mape rider Tony Rominger, who was in great shape at the time, finished the stage more than seven minutes behind the group of the Roosters, among which was the Olympic time trial champion. The following day, in a stage finished in Murcia, a fall with two kilometers to go in the middle of the bunch damaged Miguel in the rain. In 1996, the rule of the final three kilometers did not yet exist, which means now that even if a fall relegates you to the back, you arrive at the same time as the first classified riders. So that day, in the rain arrived 37 seconds behind the peloton. Eusebio and Zui cried in front of the cameras. But Manolo Saez, who had placed Jalabert and Zula at the head of the race, threatened to abandon the race if the rule was not applied. No me llames alcohólico ahora. <laughs> in the rain was now 37 seconds behind his two biggest rivals before the 43 km time trial in Avila, which was extremely tough due to the strong wind that plagued the riders on that day. Tony Rominger was the first of the favourites to start, and he immediately showed that if not for the problems in the day of Albacete, he would have been one of the main candidates to win the Vuelta. Miguel in the rain was not entirely comfortable, as he was beginning to suffer the consequences of bronchitis. Even so, as the great time trial expert that he was, he finished third in that stage and did not give off a feeling of extreme weakness although he was not in the best shape of his career. Between the two of them finished the Swiss Alex Zulle, who again took another 30 seconds off Miguel in the rain and was now the leader of the Vuelta, with 1 minute and 17 seconds of advantage over the Spaniard. This before the two mountain stages that would end in the rain's career. The 
following day, the riders arrived in Oviedo in the north with the Alto de Naranco stage. This mountain pass is not exactly one of the hardest or longest climbs in the Spanish orography, but it was key to prove that Miguel in the rain was in very bad physical condition. In the middle of the climb, just past the church of San Miguel de Lilo, the Bonesto rider ran out of strength. Ahead, Zule and Romager had attacked and in the rain was unable to follow them. In a climb of only 6 kilometers, Big Mig lost more than one minute of difference with the Yonsei rider, and the worst was yet to come. A day later, the Queen stage was held in the Lagos de Covadonga. A tough Astorian mountain of special category. On the way to it, the climb of the Mirador de Vito Pass, a place where Indorain suffered the worst moment of his sporting career. Practically at the beginning of the climb, the Mape rider, Tony Rominger, took the opportunity to attack and leave the group with only a few riders. But in the rain was not amongst them. The cameras recorded the scene. The great Spanish champion hung in on the first hard ramps and he didn't do it in any way. No, he seemed to be without strength, low in morale and giving off the impression that he had no energy to continue. The Yonsei team manager told the Gregario, Arminio Diaz Zabala, to help in the rain, at least so that the Navarres could finish the stage. But Miguelon did not want to give any more to the pedals. He had exhausted himself physically and mentally, and minutes later he abandoned in a hotel in the town of Cangas de Onis. He did not even climb the Lagos de Covadonga, which saw another masterful performance by the Jalabert Zole duo. The Vuelta would end with the victory of the Swiss, but that didn't matter to the Spanish fans. All they wanted to know about was what had happened to Indurain. He didn't say it explicitly in interviews, but everyone knew that he didn't want to compete in that Vuelta de España. His season had ended in the worst possible way, and he didn't even have a free mind anymore to go to the World Championships. The Bonesto team had squeezed him to the end, and they took advantage of the fact that his contract was coming to an end to break the last straw that he had. Just then, they made it official. The signing of Abraham Molano from Mapai to replace Miguel in the rain. The double Giro champion did have an offer from Manolo Saiz's Onsei team, but he decided to abandon professional cycling at the age of 32. He had lost all motivation, provoked by the abuses of a Benesto team that harmed him at the end of his career. Twenty years later, at a meeting to celebrate the success of the Abarca sports formation, all the great champions of the Spanish team attended, except one, the greatest of them all, Miguel Indurain. There must be a reason for that. <laughs>